Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Let's continue with the list of the best arguments I've ever heard for atheism. This week, Argument 7, The Problem of Evil. Premise 1. If God is perfectly good, then everything that he made would be perfectly good as well. Premise 2. There is evil in the universe. Conclusion. Therefore, God must either be evil, neutral, indifferent, or must not exist. This is the famous one, the one that everyone's heard of, but there's a lot of problems with it if you try to use it to prove anything logically. First off, when an atheist claims that there is evil in the universe, is he talking about real evil, or only things that he doesn't like? If he's talking about things he doesn't like, then that proves nothing about God, except that the atheist isn't him. On the other hand, if he's really talking about objective evil, then that proves there must be real objective evil, and that therefore there must be a standard for that evil. In other words, the existence of evil proves that God exists. Because of this, the argument really sort of fails on the basis of it, but there's more, of course. To start with, I've never heard or seen anyone successfully prove that premise one is true, that God's perfection obligates him to only create things that are perfect. Even if that were true, though, it wouldn't necessarily prevent evil from existing. Evil could come about as a result of the free actions of individuals who were created perfect but chose to reject that perfection. Or it could be a sort of diminishing of goodness in the same way that planetary bodies lose heat when they emerge from the flaming mass of a star. The claim that God needs to create only eternally perfect things seems to rest on two false beliefs about God. First, the belief that God isn't intelligent and therefore can't choose to create things different from himself. The very existence of the universe proves that's wrong. However, the second is a little more complex, the belief that God can't possibly justify allowing evil to exist. This second belief is a very emotionally tempting one, especially when we're suffering unfairly under evildoers, but there's really no way to prove it, because we can't prove firstly that God has no morally adequate reason for allowing evil. If there's even a possibility that God does have an adequate reason for allowing evil, then the problem of evil falls to pieces, because it's just not strong enough to be used as a proof of anything. In fact, there are many possible reasons for the existence of evil, some of which fall well within human understanding. Watch, I'll give you one right now. God is a God of love. Love can only really exist between two parties, and therefore real love requires a loving response. A loving response can only be made freely by a being that possesses free will. Free will can only be exercised by the freedom to make choices. Choices involve something to choose between. Therefore, in order for God to be loved by us, we need to have the opportunity to refuse his love. So, we have at least one viable explanation for the existence of evil, which doesn't involve God being evil or neutral or anything else but loving. A lot of people will probably be won over to atheism by this argument, but as I said, it's more of an emotional argument than anything else. It certainly has too many weaknesses to really challenge the proof for God's existence. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.